It is time for Washington to focus on the few things the Constitution establishes as the federal government's role. Defend our country, provide a cogent foreign policy, and what the heck, deliver the mail, preferably on time and on Saturdays. Get out of the health care business. Get out of the education business. Stop hammering industry. Let the sleeping giant of American enterprise create prosperity again. My fellow conservatives, the future of this nation is upon you. It belongs to you. Thousands of conservatives gathered in the nation's capital for the biggest gathering of conservatives in the whole country. This is the Citizen Link Report. I'm Stuart Shepard along with President and CEO Tom Minnery. Hi, Tom. Hello, Stuart. Uh, of course, CPAC is where we are, the Conservative Political Action Conference, and this place has been packed. Well, it has. There are conservatives from all walks of life, conservatives from all corners of the conservative movement. It is big, it is broad, and so far it's not brawling, but it's fun to be part of a larger movement and to create a beachhead as it were, for conservative social issues here at this movement. Now, there are a lot of different speakers here, and they range from libertarian, there are defense conservatives, fiscal conservatives. You're here to represent us, social conservatives. That's right. Um, principles of godly morality have to be at the basis of a movement to call itself conservative, because we're trying to preserve principles that created the country, principles that allow the country to remain free. These are principles that are consistent with biblical principles. That's why we're here. That's what we speak up for. And I know this. I know that the First Amendment guarantees the right of free speech, that it guarantees the right of a free press, and that it guarantees religious liberty for every person. And I know that it was prohibited of the government to ever dictate how much faith a person can have and to what extent a person can believe. And when the government begins to say, it's okay if you have faith, but you can only have this much of it, because when you have this much of it, and it may somehow conflict with something government has passed, here's what I know. It's time for the government to scale back, not for people of faith to scale back. Religious liberty should be unimpeded in this nation. Now, we always say that we come to this thing in order to talk to people, to share our point of view on this. You did that in a more formal way this year by having a panel discussion that talked about the differences between conservatives and libertarians. Let's talk about that. Why did you want to do that of all the topics you could pick? I want people to see and to know that the Libertarian Party is quite a bit radical when you think of its positions on important issues such as marriage. One of the points I made at our panel discussion was to remind people that liber the Libertarian Party wants to erase that little government document called the marriage license. They want we the people to be out of the business of recognizing anybody as married or unmarried. That's a social travesty. I don't think a lot of people know that about libertarians, and I wanted to underscore that point. And, and, I mean, even hearing it, it takes a moment to process it. What would still exist then if you got rid of government recognition? People who want to sign a document themselves saying they're married, that's fine. People who want to shack up without marrying, that's fine. People who want to come together for a time, maybe have some kids, and then maybe move on, that's fine. But as I said at the panel, sometimes it's not only about what adults want. Sometimes it's about what children need, and what children need is a stable, committed, enduring home so they can grow up and be mature, responsible, productive citizens. What it means to be libertarian is to be committed to a certain approach to political philosophy where the principle of liberty is the most important. And what's important to keep in mind with this is that there's a difference between a political philosophy and a personal lifestyle. Well, I think it begins with the founders' understanding of the word liberty. They chose the word liberty, which is a Latin word, rather than freedom, which is a Germanic word, precisely because they meant freedom appropriate for man. Uh, they understood liberty to be under the laws of nature and nature's God. Uh, it didn't mean license. So in this, it, it required a, a, a certain unity and agreement about certain common precepts of how we govern ourselves. The further away we go from political tribal membership, 
right? You know, when you can start thinking for yourself and focusing on individual issues and finding allies where they are on the issues that you care about, putting your arm around them and saying, let's go fight here, and then saying, okay, we don't have to agree about everything else. I think that's a normal pro procession of where America is going, and I'm ec ecstatic about it. The question of marriage does cut to the nature of things, which is the grounding for precisely the liberty you wish to defend. And if you don't recognize the fact that the government needs to protect those who have religious liberty objections to this fundamental question, then you're giving up your liberty because now government has the right to step in and define those things for you. And I guarantee you, that's what they're going to do. And we're gonna see the mass, massive expansion of the state unlike ever before. Right now, the forces of big government are on the march. And, and one thing that conservatives and libertarians have in common is resisting it. The way to resist is to acknowledge the validity of libertarian means and conservative goals. I was out in the audience with my camera taking some pictures, but as I walked through, I could hear people, depending on which point was being said, going, oh yeah, oh yeah, in the audience. What were you hoping they would, oh yeah, out there? What were you hoping they would pick up on? I was hoping they would realize that freedom does not merely mean chaos. Everybody can do what they want. Freedom means people ought to do what they ought to do, which is to see about the next generation. And it's a big commitment to raise kids. Marriage is a big part of that. I wanted to remind people about that, and I think we were able to do that at our panel. Now, there's a lot of energy here, a lot of talk about the election coming up in the fall. What's your sense of the mood of conservatism across all the different branches as represented here at CPAC 2014? Oh, Stuart, I think there is an air of expectation, an air of optimism, an air of hope, as the 2014 midterm elections approaches, people are excited about the advances to be made by the conservative movement. All right. Anything else you want to share before I let you go? No, it's just an honor for constituents of Citizen Link to support our work, to allow us to be here. It's an honor to represent Citizen Link at forums such as this. All right, Tom, thanks for your insights. Thanks for putting that panel together. I thought it was interesting. Hope you enjoyed the clips we played from that to give you a sense of what that conversation was like. We'll put the whole thing online here eventually once we get it processed and all that, so keep an eye out for that. Thanks for writing to us. You may always write to us at mail at citizenlink.com and let us know your ideas, your comments, your criticisms. We're open to that. And remember, stand tall and be heard.